Hello, good morning. Thanks for hanging out. Apologies about those last minute troubleshooting issues. Good morning, I'm Amanda Weaver. And for this episode of Instructor Insights, I'm gonna be chatting for the next few minutes with you all about rapport. Happy Thursday. If you celebrate this holiday weekend, it is Good Friday. Happy Good Friday to you all. So we're here today to talk about rapport. Um, you know, what's really interesting, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had an opportunity to catch up with some old college friends. And you know what I can tell you? Hi, Mike. How are you? It's nice to hear from you. It's been some time. Now, uh, with my college friends, I, I'll, I'll tell you, it's been some time since we as a group have gotten together. It's been about five years or so since we had all gotten together as a large group. And, you know, from time to time when we get together, or I should say, as usual, when we get together in, in these uh, long periods of time of going uh, without connecting, um, we all take turns sharing where we're at in life, with family, career, et cetera. And, you know, I'll tell you when it was my turn to kind of share um, about where I am at, um, I shared a little bit about my family, um, life, just, you know, again, in general. And I, I had an opportunity to share about where I'm at in my career and where I've been over the past five years. And, um, as many of you may know, I've been with WZ now for two years. So I shared with my college buddies um, the fact that I have transitioned from working in stores to now teaching interviewing techniques and, you know, kind of discussing really what my role now entails and the differences from working in stores to now what I'm doing today. And what was interesting is my friend Sam immediately chimed in and said, oh my gosh, Amanda, I have a story to tell you. And as my friend Sam went on to spill that tea, as he's known to do, um, he shared a really interesting story and in really what it was all about. Um, he shared that while working in IT as a remote contract employee, one day, it was a Monday morning, um, he received an email um, from his boss and he was given instructions, very vague instructions. Um, to visit a particular location, again, on a Monday morning. Um, and he was told that when he arrived to this particular location, to simply ask for somebody by a first and last name. And that was all the instructions gave. So Sam, being the compliant employee, he said he is, went ahead and followed those instructions and arrived to that particular location and asked for that individual by name. Um, so then he was escorted to a conference room and that particular individual, and we're just going to go ahead and call that individual John. Um, John was there to meet uh, him in that conference room and he greeted him professionally and, um, and John, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, greeted him as a representative of the company and indicated that he was there to talk to my friend Sam about some things that he was looking into. Um, and John had informed Sam that he shouldn't worry because John was there to help them. So Sam then asked, hey, is everything okay? And John then responded and said, yes, of course. Um, but I do have to ask you some questions. But first, before we get started, I want to ask, what kind of movies do you like? Now, at this point, Sam does pause the story and addresses us as a group and says, listen, this guy just paid me $130 in mileage for me to come out here to discuss my movie interests on a Monday morning. I was kind of caught a little bit off guard. <laughs> and Sam went on to share with us as a whole group, on a typical Monday morning, my Outlook inbox has at least 150 emails awaiting a response. And here I have this guy that I don't even know here wanting to talk to me about movies. Now, the larger group, my college friends, there were mixed reactions. There were some chuckles. I saw some people shaking their heads. A couple of my other friends took some large gulps of their cocktails sitting in front of them. But I then took the opportunity to ask my friend Sam, hey, how did that make you feel? Sam then went on to say, well, listen, on one hand, John did say there was something he was looking into and that he needed to ask me some questions, which I was totally fine with. I assumed that it, 
must have been important for the company to have me travel the distance to meet me in person. But then on the other hand, I was just so confused. And I'm sure John saw that look on my face of confusion. It was just that the way it all started just seemed so incredibly odd to me. On a Monday morning, knowing my workload, John was just so vague up front and then dove right into movies. Sam went on to say it just felt so impersonal and like John was just checking a box and almost it, Sam just said it just felt like a robot had a malfunction. So then I asked Sam, so what happened next? So then Sam continued to share. I then responded to John very respectfully, very cordially, um, that I had a very busy work day um, scheduled and that I simply did not wish to discuss movie interests at this point in time, but that I would be happily discuss work-related issues. To at this point, John responded, what, you don't like movies? And Sam then shared, it wasn't about what he said, it was about how he said that statement. At that point, Sam then requested to speak to his supervisor before he answered any further questions, which I'm happy to hear that John then um, granted Sam's request at that point. Sam then wrapped up the story by sharing how he felt that, about that last comment that was made by Sean, uh, John, that it was snarky. And because of that exact last comment and what I shared with you, it wasn't what he said, it was how he said it. And it was because of that, again, he no longer had the willingness to want to talk to John. Now, I recognize I'm hearing one side of the story. Sam's my friend, I've known him for a long time, but again, being objective here, I am only hearing one side of the story, but I can tell you it's not one that I haven't heard before. Now, while the details may differ, the issue is still the same. It's a lousy attempt at establishing rapport and a failed attempt at managing the resistance that resulted. So again, we're here to talk about how we go about establishing rapport. Now, the first most critical step in any interaction be it in the interview setting, be it having a conversation with someone, whatever it may be, in that interaction, we want to develop a genuine connection. We want to encourage a cooperative mindset where our interviewee wants to take ownership and action to make a positive change. Turn the tables for a moment. If you were to find yourself in a similar situation, how would you like to be treated? How would you like to be talked to? Maybe it's not you. Think of a loved one. If they were in a similar situation, how would you want them treated or talked to? Something that stood out for me when I had my children. God forbid they made a bad decision. I think about how I would want them spoken to or treated during that investigation. So when you think about that, that's the first step here. Be open to discussing logistical concerns, excuse me there, those logistical concerns that could come up during a conversation, such as restrooms, breaks, requests for a, a water or a pop or some sort of refreshment. Address your interviewee by name as they enter the conversation or join in on that conversation and definitely acknowledge that time by saying something like, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. And then also definitely be sure to adhere to company guidelines for timing of appropriate delivery um, and special protocol for vulnerable interviewees as it relates to any sort of notifications that may need to be delivered during the conversation. Now, when we think about establishing that genuine connection, by design, this is meant to foster truthful communication between both parties through that mutual trust and understanding. Now, during this process, we as the interviewer are practicing active listening for the purpose of identifying specific information, not only to build that bridge and to have an interactive conversation, but also to identify possible motive. Customize the approach to comfort your interviewee in this here now conversation. What this is gonna do for you is it's not only gonna get that buy-in for you as a person, you in, as that interviewer, I should say, 
but also to get that buy-in into the conversation. Now, there's two ways of going about um, developing rapport. We have a standard approach. For example, we can say something like, listen, I'm going to be telling you a lot about who I am and what I do for the company. But before I do that, I'd really like to take a moment to get to know you a little bit more. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Or another example might be, what do you like to do for fun when you're not at work? Those are just a couple of examples. But we also have a strategic approach. And this is a little bit more uh, of strategy when you're looking to uncover maybe a sensitive topic or sensitive information that your interviewee might possess. Regardless of your approach, those who learn to effectively develop rapport, even during the most challenging conversations, often find the most success in their interviews. So with that, I wish you a happy Friday, a great weekend. Thank you for joining me. Um, please remember, we uh, hold these Instructor Insights first Friday of every month. Um, with that, I hope to see each one of you soon. And with that, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.